Hello again, my name is Steve Hillis, and in this video we're going to look a little bit more at crime statistics and crime measurements. Now remember, this video series is for my classes, Intro Soch, Social 100, and Social Problems, Soch 220. In those classes, we will have already talked about the three major sources or types of crime data. We will have mentioned UCR data, Uniform Crime Report data, which is compiled by the FBI. Ultimately, if you track it down, it comes from police reports and police arrests. It's official police statistics that have been compiled by the Federal Bureau of Investigation and published. That's a major source of crime data, and it's one that criminologists, sociologists use all the time to test theories and to, to study crime trends and patterns. There's another major source of crime data, which is victimization surveys. There they go out and get a sample of Americans supposedly a random sample of Americans, a representative sample, and they go ask them, ask them what crimes they personally have been a victim of. Now, um, again, that's a little different than UCR data, which is based on arrests and crimes reported to the police. And finally, there's a third source, which isn't as common. It's called self-report data. In that case, they actually go out and ask people what crimes they've personally committed. Notice, once again, that is really different than being a victim of crime or uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, police uh, uh, reports of crime. Now, let's take a step back and kind of mention a few things, talk a little bit about some actual crime data, and then we'll talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of these different sources or types of crime data. The first point I'd like to make using this graph is that you really get different results depending on which source of data or which type of data you look at. Here you look at total violent crimes. From, this is data from 1973 to 2003. It comes from the Justice Department. And, uh, well, we can look at victimizations reported to the police. You see this trend when you look at people calling the police and claiming that they were victims of crime. This is crimes that were recorded by the police, actually where there were reports filed. And you'll notice that that produces a little different result. And finally, if you look at actual arrest for violent crime, that produces yet another pattern. Then how you determine these numbers, how you generate them, how you define them, really uh, determines what you find. Your crime data is influenced strongly by how you measure and define crime. So you get different results depending on what types of measurements you use. Now, we mentioned UCR data, and we mentioned victimization survey data. And here you're seeing two uh, examples, kind of side by side. Now, unfortunately, the dates are a little different. Here we're looking at crime reported uh, to the police, basically UCR data. It goes from 1970 to 2005. In this graph, you're looking at victimization survey data. It's broken down into two parts, property crimes here and violent crime here. Now this data goes from a slightly different period, 1973 to 2005. The reason that they didn't include the earlier years is because it wasn't available. Anyhow though, you can still kind of compare what it was like from this portion of the graph over. And you can see that both graphs show a substantial decline in crime rates from the, in the 1980s and especially 90s and into the 2000s. That's especially apparent when you look at victimization survey data over here, but you can also see a downward trend when you're looking at UCR data. Even so, even though both graphs are showing somewhat similar uh, patterns, uh, changes in crime, uh, they, you can also see clear differences in these patterns. And the differences are determined by how they're calculating and how they're defining crime, how they're measuring crime. Here you can see some UCR data from 1960 to 2006, long-term trends for all violent crimes here, for aggravated assault, forcible rape, uh, or pardon me, for robbery, rape, and murder. In other words, violent crime and a whole series of particular types or specific types of violent crime. Here we're looking at UCR data, 1960 to 2006, for property crimes. And once again, total property crimes, uh, larceny and theft, burglary, and finally, motor vehicle theft. 
Now you got to be careful. I do need to point out that the scale on this graph is very different than the scale on this graph. The reason I mention that is to point out that there's simply a whole lot more property crime than violent crime. You might not notice that if you just looked at both pictures, but notice the numbers on these scales are bunched together a lot tighter. Zero, 500, 1,000, 1,500. That's a lot different than 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. In other words, this graph is kind of scrunched together. That's the reason it kind of looks like the number of property crimes, the number of violent crimes are, are very similar. The larger point here is you're looking at UCR uh, data and for different kinds of crimes over a long period of time. Now, let's look at a different source of crime data for a slightly different time period, 1973 to 2006. Here we're looking again at victimization survey data, victimiz uh, uh, victimization rates per 100,000 for violent crimes, for simple assault, aggravated assault, robbery, rape, and murder. Someone in your household was murdered. How about property crime? Well, again, from 73 to 2006, total property crimes reported victimizations of, regarding uh, property crimes, uh, thefts, burglaries, and motor vehicle thefts. Now, just look at this one. Compare this graph to this graph. Again, be careful because this graph doesn't cover quite the same time period. This one starts out in 1973. This one goes all the way back to 1960. So let's kind of, I don't know, cut it off right about, let's see here, about here. Look at that pattern to the right of my red pen and compare it to that. A little different pattern, but fairly similar. Again, depending on which source of data you, you look at, whether you look at UCR data or victimization survey, you do get differences, both in terms of the specific numbers, but also in terms of broad patterns. You can make a similar point looking at violent crime rates. Again, comparing this data from victimization surveys to this data from uh, UCR data. And by the way, here you see some really apparent differences comparing that portion of the UCR data graph to this data. For example, they both show a remarkable decline in violent crime rates during the 1990s. But this one shows a much steeper increase in violent crime rates in the period before compared to this one. So there's some important differences, but there's also apparent similarities. The larger point is, is you do get different results depending on which type or source of data you use. And that will determine how fast you think crime is rising, how much crime you think there is, and so forth and so on. I'd like to spend the rest of the time in this video focusing a little more on a more specific topic, which is, well, what are the potential strengths and weaknesses of each of these different sources of data? Different measures of crime each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Observe these issues relate back to our earlier discussions about methodology in general and measurement in particular, because we're talking here about measuring crime. UCR data has several advantages. Let's focus on uniform crime report data. It's really popular. In fact, it's probably the most predominant form of data used by criminologists. It uses formal, systematic procedures to define and measure crime and produces volumes of crime data on a wide range of crimes over an extended period of, uh, of time, decades and decades and decades, really back to the 1930s. Uh, for almost the entire United States, it covers almost the whole country. The results provide a huge data archive for empirical research and theory testing. And in many respects, the data appears to be fairly high quality, uh, at least uh, if not completely state of the art, uh, at least pretty good by most people's standards. But UCR, UCR data has some methodological limitations as well. A few police departments do not report their crime data. Most police departments, the vast majority do, but some don't. More importantly, different jurisdictions may sometimes report very similar criminal acts in very different ways. 
That is a problem. Such inconsistencies raise some questions about crime data when aggregated across jurisdictions. What might be aggravated assault in one jurisdiction might not be treated as quite a serious crime, might be simple assault in another jurisdiction. Again, that is affected by everything from what kinds of decisions prosecutors make to subtle differences in laws, to subtle differences in police uh, policies, and also on how police decide how to report and record crimes. They're supposed to all be following more or less the same guidelines for uh, defining crimes and reporting crimes, but sometimes different police departments really kind of subtly use different rules, different assumptions, maybe without even knowing it. Also, there have been allegations that some police agencies may game the numbers in order to purposely understate or overstate crime rates. That's controversial. For example, some claims have been made in New York City that maybe some precincts are consciously overstating some kinds of crime, like drugs, drug arrests, basically inflating those numbers to make their police uh, precinct look like it's more aggressively fighting against drugs. At the same time, systematically underreporting other more serious kinds of crime like uh, uh, robbery and rape and so forth. Now, whether those allegations are true or not, I will leave to the viewer. I simply don't know. I'm, I, I've never studied that particular case. But the point is, is those kinds of allegations have been made, and not just in New York. And clearly, sometimes there are incentives and motivations by police departments maybe to fiddle around or uh, misreport uh, their data. That could introduce a certain kind of bias into the actual data. But the most serious measurement problem involves serious, persistent undercounting of many types of crime, including crimes like rape, burglary, assault, etc. We appear to be undercounting these kinds of crime, and frankly, undercounting them fairly seriously, undercounting them over and over again. For example, some estimates uh, suggest that maybe uh, uh, roughly half of rapes go unreported to the police. And a crime that is not reported to the police just never gets on the radar screen. If it isn't reported to the police, it doesn't exist according to UCR data. This problem results primarily from a large number of unreported crimes, which by definition never appear in UCR data. In other words, there appears to be significant measurement bias, downward measurement bias, but it's not, equally bad, uh, it's not an equally bad problem across all crimes. For example, presumably most homicides are reported to the police, probably the vast majority. But for other kinds of crimes, that's probably not the case, and we may very well be systematically undercounting those types of crimes.